alternative methods of feeding the learning objectives of this presentation are to know what is meant by alternative feeding methods the various alternative methods how to choose a suitable method the technique to use these methods how to express breast milk for feeding how to maintain adequate lactation and how to assess adequacy of feeding what are alternative methods of feeding a low birth weight baby breast milk is the best milk for babies the best method of feeding is directly from the breast however some babies cannot feed effectively from the breast because they are less than 34 weeks of gestation or sick babies with cleft palate and lip also need alternative methods of feeding Some mothers are unable to feed babies directly at the breast because they are sick or have some breast related issues like engorged breasts, mastitis or flat or sore nipples. Alternative methods of feeding include spoon, pallidae, cup or intragastric tube feeding. Articles that should not be used for feeding babies are droppers, syringes or bottles. It is most important to remember that whichever method is used to feed the baby the feed should only be mother's milk spoon feeding a small and smooth edged stainless steel spoon can be used to feed babies effectively the advantages of using a spoon are that even very small amounts of colostrum can be collected in it secondly it is very useful for feeding babies with cleft lip or palate the disadvantages of using a spoon are that spoon feeding is a slow process and it is difficult to manage a spoon in one hand and a katori in the other while holding the baby semi upright technique of spoon feeding to be fed with a spoon the baby must be awake and held upright the spoon should be cleaned with soap and water then boiled for 5 minutes A disposable napkin is placed in front of the baby as a bib to catch any spillage. The spoon is filled with milk from a katori. That is why this method is also known as katori spoon feeding. The spoon is held at the side of the baby's mouth and tilted slightly. The baby himself will put out his tongue and sip the milk. It must be ensured that milk is allowed to flow into the baby's mouth. only after he has swallowed what was already there after feeding baby must be held upright for 15 20 minutes for burping and then made to lie on his left side with head slightly raised to avoid regurgitation pallidae feeding a pallidae is a small receptacle with a long pointed beak it is usually made of steel and has a capacity of 15 to 20 ml It is a traditional method of feeding babies in Asia and has been endorsed by WHO for feeding preterm babies. Advantages of feeding with a pallidae are that baby can be fed faster than with a cup or spoon and there is less spillage. Technique of feeding with a pallidae. To be fed with a pallidae, the baby must be awake and supported upright. The pallidae should be cleaned with soap and water. then boil for 5 minutes a measured amount of milk is taken in the pallidae and a disposable napkin is placed in front of the baby as a bib to catch any spillage the beak of the pallidae is taken to the outer side of the lower lip and the pallidae is tilted slightly such that the milk reaches the baby's mouth the baby will put out his tongue and sip the milk after feeding The baby must be held upright for 15-20 minutes for burping and then made to lie on his left side with head slightly raised to avoid regurgitation. Cup or katori feeding. Babies who can swallow can be fed effectively by a cup or katori made of plastic, glass or stainless steel. The capacity of the cup should be 50 to 90 ml. The edges of the cup must be rounded and smooth. A cup with a lid is useful 
as it can be used to store the milk as well as to feed the baby, thus reducing the loss of nutrients that stick to the sides of the cup. The advantages of using a cup are that it is easily available and does not need refilling. But the disadvantages are that there is considerable spillage, especially with bigger babies. Technique of cup feeding To be fed with a cup, the baby must be awake and supported upright. The cup should be cleaned with soap and water, then boiled for 5 minutes. A disposable napkin should be placed in front of the baby as a bib to absorb any spillage. The cup should be filled with the measured amount of milk, taken to the baby's mouth and gently tilted. Upon smelling the breast milk, the baby becomes alert, opens its mouth and puts its tongue into the milk and starts sipping it. When the infant has had enough, he will close his mouth and will not take any more. Force feeding must be avoided. After feeding, baby must be held upright for 15-20 minutes for burping and then made to lie on his left side with head slightly raised to avoid regurgitation. Intragastric feeding. This is an alternative mode of feeding for babies who are not capable of swallowing. This may be due to prematurity or due to illness. When the intragastric tube is inserted through the nose, it is known as a nasogastric or NG tube. When inserted through the mouth, it is known as an orogastric or OG tube. A nasogastric tube has less chances of getting dislodged, but it is more traumatic and increases airway resistance. Intragastric feeding is a passive method of feeding as the baby does not participate actively in feeding and has no control over the volume of feed. Therefore, the healthcare worker must feed the baby very cautiously. The advantages of intragastric feeding are that even babies less than 32 weeks gestation or sick can be fed. The disadvantages are that the tube may get dislodged and cause aspiration. Another problem can be trauma to the nasal mucosa and lastly, a skilled healthcare worker is required to execute it. Technique of intragastric feeding The articles required for intragastric feeding are a disposable polyethylene infant feeding catheter of size 6 French for more than 2000 gram babies and 5 French for less than 2000 gram babies. 2 ml and 10 ml disposable syringes, tape and stethoscope. To insert the feeding tube, the healthcare worker should wash his hands with soap and water for 2 minutes, then measure the length of the tube to be inserted from the nostril to the ear lobule and then across the abdomen midway between the ziphy sternum and umbilicus and put a mark on this point on the tube with a strip of tape. The baby's neck is flexed slightly and tube is inserted through the mouth till the mark and fixed near the mouth. Then a 2 ml syringe is taken and air is pushed down the tube with a jerk, simultaneously auscultating over the stomach. A gush of air heard over the stomach indicates that the tip of the tube is in the stomach. Alternatively, the contents of the stomach can be aspirated with a 2 ml syringe to confirm the position of the tube. A 10 ml syringe is then attached to the end of the tube without its plunger. A measured amount of milk is then poured into the syringe and allowed to trickle into the stomach by gravity. The tube is then closed and the baby turned to lie on his left side with head slightly elevated to avoid regurgitation. The OG tube should be changed every 2-3 to three days. While removing the tube, it must be kinked and then pulled out to avoid gastric contents from trickling into the trachea. Deciding the initial feeding method For deciding the initial feeding method, 
we have to first see if the baby is stable a stable baby has normal vitals absence of significant disease like apnea seizures or abdominal distension a baby who is not stable is given iv fluids initially and feeding is gradually started according to his condition if baby is stable and his weight is more than 1000 grams we check if he can breastfeed effectively by this we mean that when offered the breast the baby roots attaches well and suckles effectively and long enough to feed successfully such a baby can be fed directly on the breast if he cannot breastfeed effectively he is evaluated to be fed with an alternative method like cup spoon or paladin if when offered a cup spoon or paladin the baby opens his mouth takes milk and swallows without spluttering or coughing and can take adequate quantities to satisfy his needs such a baby can be fed this way if he cannot he is fed with an intragastric tube progression to breastfeeding from an alternate method of feeding the ultimate aim is to gradually and systematically progress to direct breastfeeding in the smallest and sickest babies feeding begins with an intragastric tube and gradually progresses to partial spoon and tube feeding as the baby begins accepting his measured food volume with a spoon tube feeding is gradually stopped the baby is routinely put to the empty breast for non nutritive sucking and in some more time he learns to feed effectively directly at the breast how to express breast milk and maintain adequate lactation it is essential to teach mothers how to express milk efficiently she should wash her hands with soap and water for 2 minutes then take a wide mouthed container preferably one with a lid and massage her breast in all four quadrants from outside towards the nipple then she should place her index finger and thumb at the junction of the areola and the skin and compress and release the breast tissue rhythmically the procedure if done correctly will be painless milk will start dripping into the container she should stop expressing once no milk is dripping and proceed to express from the other breast this milk can be covered and kept at room temperature for 6 hours or in a refrigerator for 24 hours to ensure a good milk output by the mother she must express 10 to 12 times in 24 hours this will stimulate secretion of prolactin which is required for production of milk two milk expression sessions must not be less than 1 hour or more than 5 hours apart it is advisable to make a schedule for the mother as per her convenience for example between 8 am and 12 noon three sessions at 1 hour interval between 2 pm and 6 pm three sessions at 1 hour interval between 8 pm to 10 pm two to three sessions at 1 hour intervals once at night and once immediately after getting up ensuring adequacy of feeding it is important to assess whether a baby who is being fed is getting adequate nutrition to assess this the baby should be weighed every day babies usually gain 10 to 15 grams per kg per day after the initial few days and cross birth weight by 10 to 14 days a well fed baby passes urine 6 to 8 times every day and sleeps for 2 to 3 hours after a feed take home messages alternative methods of feeding are indicated in babies who are not able to breastfeed effectively we must use only express breast milk for feeding a systematic approach is needed to decide the method of feeding if a baby is not able to feed with a katori or spoon adequately 
one must switch to intragastric tube feeding. Principles of feeding are common for all alternative methods. It is very important to ensure hygiene while feeding babies. Thank you.